Hi, I'm Doug Gardner, and thank you for joining us today. You know, many of you have asked questions about, Doug, what does your basic video rig look like? What equipment do you use on most shoots? And today, I'm going to go through some of that. This is my standard shooting rig, and uh, we're going to start at the tripod and work our way up. So down here at the bottom, I have a Sackler 23 Mark III Pro Video uh, Fluid Head and I have a Sackler carbon fiber tripod. Now this would be, I would call it a, a little bit larger than medium sized tripod. They get very big and very large. Um, and when you're using really heavy rigs, you would need to go up to something like that. But for this rig, this works really good. It's a carbon fiber um, base to it. And the legs are your traditional fluted or multi-shafted leg system. The idea behind that is that as you have vibrations that travel from the ground up to the camera or down, the more shafts that you have, that vibration is divided by each shaft that, um, that makes up the legs, therefore reducing the amount of vibration that actually makes it to the camera, thus ruining your video footage. So this head here has all of the basic knobs and features that you need on a pro head. You know, it's got the, the locking mechanism, you can change the resistance for the pan and for the tilt. You have counterbalance mechanisms here that you can adjust the counterbalance based on how much weight your camera um, actually weighs and allows you to get the camera in one position and leave it there and it'll stay there. It also has the sliding top balance plate so you can move the whole head back and forth to make sure you get that perfect balance. As we come on up from the base plate of the fluid head, you'll have the rail system. Now, rails, there's many different reasons for rails. On a video uh, camera, the biggest reason, well, there's two big reasons. One, it'll, it gives you somewhere to attach certain other pieces of equipment like the follow focus. Um, you, can, you can put brackets on these rods that hold things like batteries or microphones or whatever. The biggest reason that I use it is because it, the front of the rail is attached to the base plate of the lens and to the bottom of the camera. So what this does, this makes the camera and the lens all one rigid piece um, and you don't get any flex between the lens and the body at the mount area. That's one of the weakest places on, on a system is where the lens actually hooks to the front of the camera. So I have the rail system, I have quick release brackets so I can quickly remove the lens or the body from this and change lenses out or change bodies out. The lens is a Sigma 60 to 600 telephoto zoom lens and I really like this. It is really the only lens option available in any brand that gives you the range of what we normally use on big productions, which is a Canon 50 to 1000 millimeter lens. That lens, however, is $72,000 by itself. This is what I call the poor man's CN20. It comes in at about $2,000 and I have used it on blue chip films in the past and it produces exceptional quality. Now if we come on over here we have a follow focus wheel and what that does it's a more ergonomic and I guess organic feel to turning the focus wheel of the lens. With photo lenses the focus barrel is very touchy. You move that barrel just a little bit and it really makes a big difference in how far the focus throw is on the actual lens. So these follow focus units, it's a series of gears that step up or step down and they touch the focusing barrel of the lens. And so what happens now is I can actually turn the wheel a significant amount and it only turns the lens just a little bit. So when you're trying to follow focus on an animal moving or bird flying, it's much easier to keep that bird in focus and 
uh, without dropping out of focus and um, and the feel of it is much more natural than actually having your hand on the lens barrel and trying to focus back and forth. This is a very, very crucial piece of equipment. I think for me personally, it, it makes uh, life so much easier. It, it's really increased my success rate on my follow focus footage actually being in sharp focus and actually being able to keep up with a moving animal. Next we'll go to the front of the lens and I've got mine covered up with all kind of camouflage tape but I have a map box um, that allows me to drop uh, either filters into in front of the lens. It also has a flag that sits off the front or the barn doors on the side and what we use that for is these flags they actually cut out extraneous light. So let's say this was a bright sunny day and I was out on the water. You have the sunlight striking the water and bouncing up into the lens, which can create uh, an unfavorable flare. Now, sometimes we want flare. Sometimes flare, lens flare is a really good thing and we actually try to accomplish that. But this is not what we're talking about. This is a, a very unnatural flare that it will actually wash out your image. Now, moving on to this device right here. This is called a Kipper Tie Revolver. Basically what it is, it's a mounting system that goes between the body of the camera and the back of the lens. And it has a neutral density wheel built into it. So with video, we all know that it's an absolute necessity that you have neutral density filters because we're shooting at shutter speeds that are only twice what our frame rate. Our frame rate's 24 frames a second, so it means 1 48th of a second, or 50, 1 50th of a second is, is all our shutter is going to be. So on a bright sunny day, we would have to have a really, really uh, small f-stop in order to get the light, cut the light down to where the exposure is right. So we don't always want to do that, so you have to have a neutral density filter that cuts the light down. The nice thing about this particular device is it has four different settings starting at clear and just with a with the rotation of my my finger on the thing I can go to a half a stop, a full stop, a stop and a half, two stops. This also comes with different cartridges so I could adjust it so that I have clear and it could start at one and a half stops and go up to three or four stops. So that is very, very, very convenient and it has really been a game changer having this option uh, right there at my fingertips. The, what it alleviates is having to use the old plates where we had neutral density glass plates that we had to drop down in front of the glass and pull it out. And one plate was set at one ND setting. So you had a one stop plate, you had a two stop plate and a three stop plate if you need uh, more than that, you just had to start stacking glass. And if you're working in a blind and you're having to stick your hand out of the window of the blind, now the animal can see you're trying to fumble around pulling plates out. It was a real mess. It worked, but it was, it was not easy. This is a game changer with the revolver system. Moving on to the camera. Uh, this is one of the new red V-Raptors. Uh, it's an 8K cinema camera. And not much to say about it other than I really love it. I've had three other red bodies. Um, I've had a Dragon, I've had Helium, and now this. And they've all just been really, really great uh, cinema cameras to use. They, they tick all the boxes that we need for natural history cinematography. You'll find either Aries or Reds or uh, Sony cameras. Those tend to be the ones that are used the most in natural history work. So if we Swing the camera on around. We have our batteries. Uh, on this particular one, I, I have my rig set up with a dual battery adjuster. So, dual battery um, adapter, excuse me. So basically what I can do, normally, trying to do this with, with two hands, normally this is the way the battery goes onto the camera. It's just a V-lock battery and it drops on the back. Well, you're filming and you're getting low on battery and something happens and you don't have time to change the battery. Now you run the risk of the battery running out right in the middle of the heat of the moment and you miss the footage or you change batteries too early and you start running batteries down. You run into the issue of running out of battery power and then you're having to go back to old batteries saying, oh, I think I got 25% left on this battery. Those days are gone. 
you have this wonderful little dual adapter, V-lock adapter, and it locks on just like a battery onto the back of it. And now you can use the new mini or micro technology for the V-lock batteries. This also comes in um, the G-mount as well, gold mount. You lock both batteries on. Now what happens is as I'm filming, the camera is draining one battery at a time. When this battery goes completely dead, it will automatically kick over without interrupting my recording and start pulling voltage off of the second battery. At that time, I can take the old battery off whenever I have a chance, put a new one on. When this battery dies, it jumps back to the, the first one. There's also a setting on this adapter where you can have the camera drain both batteries simultaneously so that they both go dead at the same time. The, my whole reason for getting this adapter was so I didn't mess up and actually find myself in a situation with a dead battery at the wrong moment. So I like being able to drain one battery, it automatically jumped to another, then I changed the, the dead battery. Moving on around, uh, of course we have a monitor. I'm using the, uh, the new small HD monitor that was built for the new Red Raptors cameras. Um, not much to say about it. It's great camp, great monitor, crystal clear, nice and bright um, um, in bright sun. So um, it's touch screen, everything works really well. And it's large enough that I can see what I'm focusing on clearly, but not so big that it acts like a giant sail when you get out in the wind. And that can vibrate your, um, your camera. Moving on around, I'll have, uh, now on this, on my tripod, I've got a, a messy glob of tape here, but I have a lot of different uh, remote record stop-start switches here. Um, I have one for all different cameras that I've ever used, and I don't know why they don't have a common connection for all of them, but anyway. Um, but for this particular camera, I'm using the Mutiny stop-start re remote record switch, which I just have gaff taped onto the handle of the tripod and it comes up plugs into the back of the camera uh, we have the right side menu of the camera and that's about it for this side and i choose to have my handle um, mounted forward so that i can move it in and out of a bag quickly and i don't have to disassemble all of this i always build my rigs and purchase and design my bags that i put these in so that I can pull the camera out and it's ready to shoot. I don't have to take the monitor out of a bag, mount it up, get it adjusted, pull the batteries out. Everything is ready to go. I can pull it out, turn it on, and I'm, and I'm shooting. So that is uh, pretty much the way I have my rig set up. One of the nice things about um, having these, what we call cheese plates mounted all over the camera these cameras today are built to be modular, so you can build and design the rig however you want, whatever feels more comfortable for you, whatever's convenient. So I could actually mount the handle back here, I could put the monitor on this side, I could put it on the front, I could have the monitor hanging off the side. There's the, the possibilities are endless. So in a nutshell, that's my rig, and uh, it works pretty darn good for most of the things I'm filming. Um, this rig will change significantly uh, if we get onto a production where we're using the Canon 50 to 1000, also called a CN20. Uh, it's a very big lens that uh, goes from 50 to 1000 millimeters. So all of this has to change at the, at the base here. If we put that lens on this camera, we have to have bigger mounting plates, we have to have bigger rails, we have to have a much larger fluid head and tripod to support it because with that much magnification and that much physical weight uh, you get a lot of uh, jiggling and, and and vibrations coming up through the camera and at a thousand millimeters you will see every little movement as a matter of fact i it's hard to believe but i have seen it more than once if i drink a lot of coffee in the morning and i go out and shoot and i'm using the well, 1000 millimeter lens I can actually see my pulse from my hand coming through the tripod handle through the camera and you can see that lens just moving every time my heart beats. It's hard to believe but it makes a huge difference. I hope 
you've enjoyed that if y'all like these videos please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel it helps us continue to put content out that you want to see thanks a lot